The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So it is show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Before we could continue today's discourse, it is imperative that each and every believer be controlled of the Spirit or be filled with the Spirit. The only procedure wherewith a believer can get back into fellowship is no other method than the grace provision which Lord has bestowed, Lord has graciously granted, and that is nothing but rebound. Rebound is 1 John 1 9, the confession of our sin to Lord God the Father, in the privacy of our priesthood, because we are dealing with His doctrine, with His mind, so that the doctrine that we learn should yield in us that great joy, that great joy of quality derived from the virtue of Bible doctrine in the thinking of Christ through his mind which is not based upon emotion but purely by the fellowship what we can have through his word every believer has been designed for joy Every believer has been designed for suffering over blessing. And this suffering over blessing is our testing when we have to go through as a Christian suffering, maturing towards Bible doctrine. Not suffering and feeling sad because of our own negative evolution, for our own punitive actions. But the greater your joy that you increase in the word of the Lord, the greater your persecution from Satan to allure you from the word, to obscure you from the truth. And to cause you to involve and indulge, to take your own decisions, the punitive actions, and see that you are not going to enjoy that great joy which Lord has designed for each and every believer in eternity past. The great joy for anyone in this world as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ or as an unbeliever can be the doorway to salvation which is nothing but our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That great salvation we don't work, we don't earn, we don't deserve. But then to God graciously loved us and he has given us to enjoy this fellowship of great joy. By a simple act of faith, by faith alone in Christ alone, not audibly but inaudibly in the privacy of your soul that you tell to Lord God the Father that you believe upon his Son. What a great privilege it is for us. And several times we are not able to comprehend this doctrine because we are not able to understand the fellowship, the joy, what Lord wants to share to us. Lord wants to share this joy for us only when we are growing up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine and when we are building up in the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which is of so great and so important. This great ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which has not been given in the past of Old Testament, which was only endowment, only on certain few. But right now in the church age, each and every believer, individually, corporatively, wife and husband, in fact, even corporatively through the church, we all belong corporatively even to the church. Have to make sure that we are dealing with 
the true doctrine of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the true fellowship. No salvation given to any member of the human race apart from believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. No salvation designed for any member of the human race so that he can make his joy fulfilled. He may be satisfactory for his own thinking if he at all he wants to work out his salvation. As the unbelievers constantly do, they want to think that they can purchase this salvation by gold and silver. They want to purchase their salvation by their good deeds. But Hebrew is very clear. All your good deeds are ministrous cloths. They are fit for nothing. You are just going to throw it out. So this salvation is a process for us to rejoice in the Lord again. Again we say rejoice. The first joy, what we can enjoy, that we have been made an absolute assurance, the very words of our Lord who said, Verily, verily, for truth, for truth. That there is none who can take out your salvation when you truly believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And truly believing in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, does not include emotion, but it demands naked faith. To replace your thinking by the word which he has been given to us and you take it and you hold upon it and you be led to it that's the way you think the great assurance in the infallible and inherent word of our Lord who has given to us It doesn't mean to say that you need to gibberishly jump around, dance around, speak in tongues, do this, do that. No. At the moment of salvation as a believer, you doesn't even know. Because you are still a newborn baby. Spiritually. Being born again. And this newborn baby demands the sincere milk of the pure word of the Lord. This newborn baby, as he grows up, he demands to know the bread to grow up. Though the outward man perishes, inward man being renewed day by day. Later on, as he becomes adult, he requires solid meat, strong food. And this solid meat is a discernment for him to know what is right and what is wrong. What is correct and what is incorrect. Which doctrine to believe and which doctrine not to believe? And why aren't we able to understand this simple truth that we are going through in the journey of our life to rejoice and to have that great join us? Because as a believers in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we are not consuming, number one, the pure milk so that our hypocritical life can be washed out. The rottenness that we have been executing from the garbage of our soul have to be thoroughly cleansed. Because we don't take the sincere milk. Because to take that pure milk or that sincere word, or pure word or sincere milk, it demands faith. A faith which is nothing but a grace apparatus of perception for you to use rebound in the privacy of your priesthood as a believer because you have to make sure that you have been constantly controlled by the Spirit, constantly indwelt by the Spirit. Permanency of the indwelling is absolutely granted but fellowship is temporary so this through this indwelling permanent relationship of Lord God the Holy Spirit Lord God the Father and Lord God the Son to make you to grow up to make you to realize the reality of the word of the Lord you need to be number one controlled of the Spirit by using 1 John 1 9 Without using 1 John 1 9, you cannot be controlled of the Spirit, dear brethren. Without using the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sin, because in this church age, at the intensified stage of this angelic conflict, every believer's breath is so essential, whether he's been using to the glory of the Lord or he's been using to the waste, vain glory of this earth. The true great difference is what we need to understand. Either you will be opting to be in fellowship with Lord God, the Holy Spirit, as, to, as, a, as such who has to control your soul. Or you will be opting to the old sin nature, because whenever we do sin, either by thought, word, or deed, 
We are going to go absolutely negative towards the cost of Bible doctrine. To fulfill the lust patterns of our old sin nature. To be constantly happy among those things which the Bible has claimed long back. It is going to yield you wood and stubble. And this doctrine which has told, though the earth and will perish, but not each and every word which Lord has proclaimed for us. And why is this that we are not capable of understanding the simple truth? Ignorance, negligence, and above all, arrogance to change our attitude. To learn the mind of Christ. To be a partaker of his fellowship. And to be a true believer in Christ. Dear brethren, time is very short. The responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is very huge and very large. And we need to make sure that every time when we start our discourse, that we have been using in the privacy of our priesthood, rebound and getting back into fellowship. So, dear brethren, in the privacy of our priesthood, we shall have a word of prayer and get back and look today's discourse. Father, we're grateful for the privilege that each and every day your graces have been renewed and you have been giving us to have mercy so that we can enjoy the fellowship wherewith you have designed for us in eternity past. Help us to truly rejoice in this world through the joy that you have already communicated for us through your words. The world is constantly evil, but thy word is always pure and holy. Help us to have that great fellowship with thy word. Through the abiding mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that we could enjoy in the pilgrimage trip thy fellowship and yield forth to thy glory that you have designed for us in eternity past. As we're going to continue about today's discourse, may Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten us in these things so that the doctrine that we're going to learn could cause us a blessing and a challenge and we can show forth that each and every day we enjoy truly thy fellowship. As we're, going to, as we're going to continue, may Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us more in depth. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen. So, starting today's discourse, in the previous tape, we have been noted some of the things pertaining to Bible doctrine, which is so great and essential for us to be number one priority in all our lives. The breath we take, the physical food we consume. Above all these things, Bible doctrine should be number one. Because we have been designed as per his, his terms and conditions. We have been set forth to show the glory of Lord God Almighty. And we have been given this great privilege of a bona fide gifted of a pastor teacher in rightly dividing the word of the Lord, which demands to him to go through the process of thorough edification, of thorough learning. And not only this, which gives to him to understand the word of the Lord as the only number one priority and to show forth where the Lord has set for us by truly exposing under the light the wrongdoings of our life. Maximum people may think about wrongdoing into the sin realm of drunkenness, fornication, adultery, disobedient to parents, homosexuals, lesbianisms, bestiality, 
whatsoever the mind of man can think, which could be termed out as great evil or lustriousness or antinomianism or covetousness. In the human viewpoint, he may think that this is the only sin and we have to get out of this. But apart from this, dear brethren, the greatest sin of all time is number one, to reject Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as our only Savior. And number two, if you are a believer already, if you are already believed, either a professed believer or a breeded believer, or you have been taken to the point of truth and you have been really convicted by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and you have been believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as the only Lord, as the only Savior, then the greatest sin for you will be that you have rejecting Bible doctrine. Not the sins of the physical body which you can think that this could be the sins. This sins doesn't have anything for you to be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. Already Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has paid for it. And when you appear at the judgment seat of Christ, it is no longer your sin as a believer that you have been done in the physical body. But rather the doctrine that have neglected to put number one priority for your soul and activate your human spirit. So that as Lord God, the Holy Spirit leads you to learn doctrine more and more, which is not based upon emotion. But thinking, thinking, thinking. Christianity is nothing but thinking. Thinking what? Bible doctrine. Without thinking Bible doctrine, there is no way possible for you to be called as a Christian. The same mind of Christ, his attitude, we need to have it. And that's not possible for any one of the believers in this church age. Apart from the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to be learning that thinking of Christ. Without using rebound, without having the trident through fellowship with Jehovah, you cannot have to grow up to the state where Lord has kept you at rate past, designed to experience. Positionally being sanctified experientially, you need to grow up. And that demands the doctrine as the only nutrient to your soul. And that doctrine has to be inculcated by the pastor teacher through a concept known as ICE, which is isagogical, categorical, and exegetical method of explanation of the word. Not going through any scientific physiology, but rather yielding to the fruit of the reality of the word of the Lord as number one priority. This scientific physiology may be, for some extension, good. But exegesis is not that scientific explanation of the word. But rather, this exegesis is a harmonical principle for you to go back and dig and derive and tell what is the author's intention. What was like that the Holy Spirit intending for us to learn through it? And by those words we have been used and communicated by Apostle Paul so that we can enjoy today the real growth, the real joy which Lord has designed for us. Many people may tell exegesis is tough. Whether you believe it or not, that is the only standard which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ communicated to the people through the Gospel of John, which makes very evidently clear for us in John 1.18. No man has seen God at any time. But it is only the begotten Son of Lord God the Father who has come, the Monegine. What he's going to do, he's going to reveal you the scriptures that's as simple as that. How he's going to reveal it through exegiomai, exegesis, there it comes. And we as having the bona fide gifted of a pastor teacher, if we are not following the same footsteps of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who left behind or here in this earth, the procedure to explain about God, the procedure to lead out to the people exactly the truth, and cause them to understand that great joy when we can have when with the true fellowship of Lord. Being exegesis, we cannot call it as a some sort of a scientific phraseology or tough words to be inculcated or tough words to be interpreted. No. You have to go through that. You have to go through that. He's not asking you to pay for your entire life, to pay some burden into your entire. No. 
Nothing is impossible with God. You have a desire, Lord will fulfill that. As the Pentecostal crowds they have, until and unless we gibberishly jump around, dance around and speak in tongues, you are not been at all saved. They have a desire towards this Engashabutas demon who took control of their vocal cords and lead them into blasphemy by Christ. They are having that fulfillment from Satan. When evil can represent them so much of evil and yield them, telling that when their emotional imbalance, they dance around, they talk around. How much more it will be pure for the Lord when you capture vocal cords by not speaking in such kind of an evil and gastromuthas demon, and you have been ready faithful to the Lord with the earnest desire and a true heart to Jehovah that you are capable of understanding the word and you are desiring to learn the word of the Lord. Will not Lord teach you exegesis? Exegesis is what? Learning Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. Going through its proper grammatical syntaxes. Learning the phrasing, learning the diphthongs, the moods, the tenses. If it is in the Hebrew, the cal, the stems. It's not a tough thing. Even unbelievers can learn Hebrew and Greek commonly. How much more you and I as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ cannot learn these things. The only desire is that we are not capable of asking our Lord, Lord, kindly lead us to learn this truth. So that we can take, not as per the scientific phraseology, but by your mind, the words that have communicated. And you know what, dear brother? You are not just uncivilized as such. That you don't have the completed canon of scripture revealed for in the original Greek. You just need to learn the basic alphabets, the basic grammar, and you need to come back. And you need to go in depth day by day, day by day, as you grow up. Not one year, two years, three years, but ultimately four, five, six, seven, eight years. So that you can learn to the master level of the Greek. Because, you know, even when we shave our head as I have did, till it could grow up my hairs, it will take time. It's a process of time. Instantly, the hairs will not come. Because you might be seeing in the other videos as well. My hair, long hair, and when once I finish a task, then I come back and shave it off, and again I leave the hair to go grow it up. It takes time for us to learn day by day. It's a process. Does not the nature itself teach to you to grow up your hair? It takes time. It takes a process of some days, again, to get back to that normalcy level of the hairs. When God has been teaching for us through the simple aspects of our life, which day-to-day -day activities we can absorb and we can look. Exactly, it's a day-by-day -day process that we need to learn the Greek or the Hebrew or the Aramaic. Or day by day renovation of your thinking through the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, from a right pastor teacher. And this I'm telling for the pastors to learn Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. And to the believers, they have to be communicated by this pastor who has already been learned of these things. Does not the nature itself teach to you that we have to go through this process? Does not the nature itself cause us to learn that it is a slow process of growth and how come these pentecostal crowds will come and tell to you that when you are edifying yourself and gibberishly jumping around dancing around and you will tell that in the soul i was talking and i was talking in the tongues my edification was going on if that is a process for you then why do you want to come back to this normal world again Stay in that same emotional ecstasy and show for the completed canon of scripture to be edified in you. Tell us the things pertaining to the mystery about the isagogical background of each and every author. Tell us the word which has been used by this author to communicate for us the revelation of the truth. But you will not do that. Do you know why? Because there are no real tongues. Even the tongues were used as a gift of evangelism, not for edification of learning Bible doctrine. The tongues were the cheapest gift. Apostle Paul wanted to conclude to tell to them it is the gift of prophecy, communication of the word that you have to take. 
He starts in First Corinthians 12:2 and he ends up in First Corinthians 14:2. Even after that great passage of love, and he wants to conclude there. It is communication of Bible doctrine more evidently required for the edification of your soul. And why aren't these people capable of understanding the simple truth? Because of their arro arrogance to change and to look and to concentrate upon Bible doctrine. They will think, if I stop speaking in tongues, people may say I have not been saved. Who the hell is worried about the people to tell to you? As the Bible declared it to you or not? The very words of our Lord, who are we to doubt? At the time of salvation, by faith alone, in Christ alone, when you believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, when you have been saved, says the Bible, who are you to again speculate? You are so great to go against the mind of Christ, to doubt about the very words of Jehovah. Only your arrogance can do that, not your humility to obey His word. The true humility will cause you to obey his word. It will cause you to give a true obedience by after hearing his word. To hear and to obey is the great truth. But we do hear, and sometimes we don't even like to hear. Where will come the obedience? The word of the Lord tells to us very clearly, if you neglect to hear the words which have been sent by the prophets in the Old Testament time, the Jeremiah, or in the book of Isaiah, I will see the utter destruction upon you. The people are destroyed for what? For lack of knowledge. They did not hear. Today the Christian believers, they are really destroyed to have the true fellowship with Jehovah for what? They have neglected to take number one priority for Bible doctrine, that's why. Dear brethren, it's a great shame on our part that we are not capable of giving the true devotion of our life as a pastor teacher. The duty of a pastor teacher is not to marry, not to bury, not to go upon house to house for personal counseling, visiting and telling that we have come. But the duty of the pastor teacher is to concentrate upon the original languages of the scriptures and dig in and dig out the original truth. So that the truth which has been communicated can really transform their lives like Jonah. What was the message of Jonah was very simple, right? I repent, if not Nineveh is out in 40 days. What a great message. Today we are here not pleading for you to follow these steps or that steps. This is the only procedure you have to go, that's it, whether you take it or not. Because when you appear at the judgment seat of Christ, you do have a tough time. A tough time of facing the great wrath of Lord. The greatest sin of your life as a pastor teacher. Negligence in communicating the word through isagogical, categorical and exegetical explanation or the dispensing technique of dispensations. And as a believer, the great negligence on part of each and every member of the human race. What for? To take number one priority for Bible doctrine, to search early, to seek Him, and to be obeying for Him and for His Word. And which way you have to go, you have to decide. We are not telling you to be always positive. So that you can do always good things. The direction of your soul, whether it has been controlled by the old sin nature or by the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit will cause you to go through this process, will cause you to learn through this process, will cause you to engage in this process. And do you know what it is? That is your soul, which is a deciding factor. Either you may love the Lord or you may reject the love of Lord. But what ultimately we will tell to you all the time, take in number one priority. When your soul determines which way you have to go. 
So, dear brethren, ponder over these things as we shall continue in the next day. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. Inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father that they believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself, we shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth is simple. The living Christ in the privacy of your soul, you tell to Lord God the Father that you believe upon his Son. That is the moment itself, you shall have this eternal life. Whereas for the believers, the great truth is very simple. Grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. So that when you are there in the filling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, he will search you the scriptures diligently. And the diligent search of the scriptures is what ultima that you and I have to proclaim as an ambassador. And whereas for the pastor teachers, the great man is to carousothon laga and herald the word. In season and out of season. Wherewith you and I have been given number one priority for this. And the doctrine which you have been here learning, going through the process. And this learning process, which a pastor teacher ought to inculcate, is recorded again for the diamatrum of witnesses. The diamatrum of witnesses is nothing but the indwelling trinity. The diamatrum of witnesses is nothing but each and every word of the Bible which has been given in our hands in the completed canon of scripture. The diamatrum of witnesses are nothing but each and every believer who can listen to our tapes. Listen to our discourse. And if there are no witnesses for us, do not worry. Besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But what ultima is the truth? The ultima of the truth is, since our Lord is holy, we need to be holy. And since our Lord has given for us through the process of exegesis, we have to follow that. And when the Bible doesn't recognize any other oration, any other oratory, so that you can try to tell them, the greatest sin can be your drunkenness or this. No, the greatest sin for an unbeliever that he has not believed in Christ and the greatest sin for a believer that he has not grown up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, though positionally has been sanctified and kept superior then to the chief fallen angel known as Satan, but experientially he has been failed to grow up to that status quo of that great Tagavaralis. The great polity of privileges given to you as a unique dispensational believer, termed out as is of great worth. And how many days more you think you can stay back? And we cannot stay back at the judgment seat of Christ to proclaim ignorance or to plead ignorance to show forth your regret attitude. The only retaliation where you want to pay in the heaven at the judgment seat of Christ should be paid right now while you are still alive in this earth. And that retaliation is what? Upon Satan and upon your own negative volition to learn Bible doctrine. The way when you want to take revenge against your enemy, how much you plan. Now your enemy is unseen, Satan, but made evidently clear through the holes in nature of your lust patterns whenever you go and give a budge of an inch to be obeying for your lust patterns to be fulfilled causing you to be alluring of the word, obscuring you from the truth. And you have to retaliate over them and to be controlled of the spirit of Lord God, the Holy Spirit who involves in you. How you can pay back retaliation? Lord said, it is not your work, it is my work. Vengeance belongs to me. So you submit everything into the hands of Lord God, the Holy Spirit who permanently involves in you by not grieving him, squelching him, not lying to him, but constantly being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then God knows how to pay back your roles in nature. In return, the roles in nature, which is your source to tempt for you, the power which is behind that, which is nothing but your temptation, your lust patterns, which is the Satan, the main origin, Lord knows how to pay back Satan. Because you have been designed to have that joy. That great joy which the Lord has communed for us in John 16 and 15. How many of us are really enjoying this joy? How many of the pastor teachers are really exerting this joy into the minds of the people who have been there in the pews? You need to answer yourself to Lord, not to me. We are just over here in the parallel time of the pilgrimage trip. The better and the best what we can do is to encourage one another. And reprove under the light of Bible doctrine as Alanko in the Greek goes. And tell to you what is the truth and why are we here to obey to the truth. 
So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. Because time is very short. The responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too big. So we shall continue in the next tape. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to our fellowship through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge our in Lord. For we ask in Christ's name, Father. Amen. <laughs>